Hello, everybody. I know it's early back home, but remember, it's worth getting up today. This is a very special day in the Tour de France. So welcome from Phil and Paul Sherwin. Back in the saddle, I've got it, he says. Here we go. There's the pistol shot. Alberto Contador's over the line. He's the next Mayo Jean of the Tour de France. Are you watching these dumb tapes again? It's 730. Oh, man, I gotta get to work. He's establishing a podium finish in Remember, we are live with the start of the Tour de France today. We stay with these riders till they cross the finishing line in Bourg Saint Maurice. So enjoy these images. There's always a neutral start to a stage like this, just to get them out of the centre of town. And as soon as they get to the end, a neutralised section, kilometre zero, they call it. The race organizer will take in the flag, and then the race will begin in earnest. And doesn't the peloton look small when it's all bunched up like that? But there are indeed 162 riders in the pack as uh, they're just uh, not in a hurry to meet their rendezvous today it, ha it gets off to such a hard start and once they're over the top it's they plunge down uh, through italy a sprint in sarp and Prey saint didier and then we're back onto the col de petit samba samba two major climbs there they are uh, the one on the left slightly higher than the one on the right but we are talking serious height uh, the grand saint bernard on the left is 2473 meters high we come down only slightly on the petit saint bernard to 2188 there's the first move of the day now is that bryce failure no it isn't who started the move but it is his teammate who shot off up the road here wind down here is so much stronger than two days ago go this is serious it is very difficult to ride in a crosswind because you have to try and get shelter from the wind at a 45 degree angle behind the rider in front of you but once you get the full wind in your face you can get popped out of the back like nothing but the wind is coming at the moment from the right of the picture blowing across the riders and that's the biggest damage they can do the crosswinds are the fear of the weakest men but they are loved by the strong men it's riding into the belly of the whale today that's for sure because right ahead are the high mountains here the mountains that separate france switzerland and italy and we're going to zigzag over them both well, this guy's hit the hill he looks like he's sprinting up it at the moment he's not climbing it he's just racing it and he's very very strong he's clearly feeling on a hot day now taking all the pressure off his team by the way carlos sastra last year's winner who joined the team this year it's a new team on the block and uh, he now is searching their second stage win of the tour. And he's riding and one of those days, a very special day, where he feels that he can't do anything wrong. He knows that he, it's uphill and down dale over the next uh, 35 kilometers, and, and that, I think, was what he'll do, Phil. He'll really try and hurt himself on the climbs because he knows on the descent he's not going to lose anything to the main field. Such a good descender he is. Well, that is the climb that we're about to make our way over the top of, Phil, and that really is, uh, I suppose, I'd have to say, an Alpe d'Huez-type climb. Well, it does look like Alpe d'Huez. Somebody's thrown a piece of string down through the forest there. It's just all herping bends. That's the way up, and of course, we've got the way down as well, uh, which is equally as twisty and going to be a real challenge. But there is a very, very nice view of one of the biggest mountains here in the Alps. Well, I can't believe we drove up that. Thank goodness it was dark. Tremendous climbing. Well, he predicted this, but to do what you've predicted at the start of a day is not necessarily an easy thing to do. He's had a great day out, and now he's got to try and figure out, can he get himself a stage victory? He who descends the best will win the day, because it is a very tricky descent now. So there's a skill involved in uh, going down hills extremely fast. You, you don't just uh, let the brakes go and uh, go downhill as fast as you can. You've actually got to control your speed into the corners. And that's what a lot of these riders tend to overdo sometimes. And you have to be careful not to overheat the, uh, the rims. Because if you start uh, using the brakes too much on a long descent like this, you actually heat up the rims. And that can create your tires to explode. On this descent here, as we come away from the first category climb, we're probably pushing a speed fairly close to 45. 50 miles an hour. The last climb in the Alps now. It is the Col de la Colombia. This is a very steep climb, and they haven't yet got to the steepest part of it where it kicks up to 12.5%. This suits the climb as he takes a wide berth around that corner, and then he's going to start to get out of the saddle and feel the pain starting to dig in deep for the final time because he's on the final ascent up to the finish. The young Frenchman out of the blue could be pulling the biggest race France has ever won in the stage of Tour de France for years. And he's only a young rider. 
And this will be the ride of his life. with will set him up. They'll all be queuing up to sign him up on the big team. This man now has made his move. He has to give everything he's got looking over his shoulder, trying to judge whether or not anybody's coming back. When you're in a situation like this, the body is screaming out for a little bit of respite, but you know you've got to push it that little bit further forward. This has been a show of defiance today, and when they get there, 184 kilometers in front. There are easier ways to win stages of the Tour de France. Don't slow down now. He's wondering whether he's got the strength to survive here. He is going to have the proudest moment of his career, I guess, since he wore yellow, because he's going to win a stage of the Tour de France. They're not going to catch him now. And what a way to do it. 184 kilometers in the lead for a Frenchman in Perpignan. Look, he does not believe this. He's going to enjoy the moment. He can't have ever, ever dreamt of this. Good ride, man. I tell you that. That really is very special. Yeah, the helicopter up there now getting those pictures is absolutely wonderful. Well, as we continue to pan around the high Alps here, Paul, with some stunning pictures right on the top. That is amazing up there. And that looks like it's in Mont Blanc itself, the Agui du Midi. It stands at 3,842 meters. So let's get down to the podium. There he is, still punching the sky, Paul. Well, you know, it's nice uh, when a, a good guy gets a stage victory like that. And, and uh, for him to get a victory here at the Tour de France, I think that salute over the line great. was uh, one of sheer joy for this man. Absolutely. He's, he's really happy now. And a good, good win for his team as well. They've really been a part of this Tour de France this year. Look at those legs. They conquered the mountains today, that's for sure. We'll be with you tomorrow. Remember, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I think that's 3.30 in California. You be there. We'll see you. Goodbye.